vacation but I can't have a vacation right now because it's peak catering season so I'm gonna have a staycation I felt like barbecuing I have my husband outside heating up the barbecue and I am going to prepare a delicious Mediterranean feast with a really nice glass of Pinot California Pinot so I'm gonna get started and I'm gonna start marinating my boneless leg of lamb I have five pounds of boneless leg of lamb right here. I'm just gonna pop this open and dump it inside of my bowl. Boneless leg of lamb is really great. You can uh, go to your local butcher and have them take the bone out for you, or you can buy it already boneless. And this marinade that I'm making is very easy and it's very fast, which is what I like. Because I cook for a living, I try to do things that are fast and easy, but look really complicated. It's all about the smoke and the mirrors, baby. So we have some salt, liberally salt that. We have some pepper. And I'm gonna add in my homemade yogurt. There is seriously no reason why on earth you guys should be buying yogurt when it's so easy to make and it's very inexpensive. You can find my yogurt recipe here on Organicopia, and I also have it on my blog, which is myorganicopia.com. You can find all of the recipes that we have this season on my blog. So we have a cup and a half of yogurt, and we're gonna add roughly a cup of olive oil. Seems like a lot of olive oil, but it's actually not for the amount of meat that we have. I'm gonna get in here and the easiest thing to do is just use your hands. Your hands are your best tools in the kitchen. Get that all over your lamb. And this is gonna be really, really good. Alrighty, so I'm gonna let this rest. I'm gonna rinse my hands. And this is gonna marinate while that barbecue is heating up. Meanwhile, I am gonna get started on my pita landscape, so to speak. I'm gonna show you how to build a really beautiful pita pocket. It's a pita paradise! So I just washed my hands. We have this lamb that I'm gonna let marinate for a little while. Meanwhile, I'm gonna get started on my pita paradise. So I have this really nice piece of slate to do my landscape on. And I've gone ahead and picked some fig leaves just as a garnish. Um, if you don't have fig leaves, you don't need to use them, but I think they look really pretty. I'm gonna just put them on my slate and I'm gonna garnish it with a little bit of rosemary. I like to garnish my plate with whatever I have inside of my meal. I'm gonna be utilizing rosemary, lemons, so I'm gonna use all of those on this platter as well. This 
So we are going to grill up that lamb. The lamb is gonna be served inside of this pita. I have some really nice whole wheat pitas. And we can just very simply cut these in half. Fan them out if you like. I am so in need of a vacation. I'm eight months pregnant. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of a baby moon. I would love to take a baby moon, but I can't because I am just so busy with work. So I think this is going to be a nice pretend getaway. I have my pitas. I am going to use some red onion that I have left over from lunch. Waste not, want not, as my mom always says. And I'm just gonna make really nice, simple piles. I mean, there's nothing fancy about this. It's just kind of decorating a plate, pretending that you're an artist. I am going to use some leftover cherry tomatoes that I have to build my pita landscape. Lay those out right there. And let's see what else. Let's use some beautiful sheet milk feta. I love feta. I love cheese in general. This is not like the gross prepackaged powdery stuff that you can find at any local supermarket. This is a fresh goat milk feta and it sits inside of a nice salty brine. It's very crumbly. This is one of my favorite cheeses on the planet. I'm just gonna start it by slicing the cheese so that when, or if you're having guests, I'm only gonna have my husband here, but if you were to have guests, they would know where to start on that cheese. And then I am gonna finish this off with a couple Kalamata olives. I always like to have olives inside of my pitas. And think about how good all of this stuff is gonna be with that beautiful marinated lamb that's been grilling. It is gonna be perfect. So we have some of those. And just for a little heat, we are gonna use some of these beautiful wax peppers. These are Bruno's wax peppers. They are local. They come from Lodi, California. I don't know if they have them across the United States, but these are definitely my favorite peppers. I'm gonna squeeze the leftover juice on top of those veggies, and I'm gonna give these a really nice rough chop. Just for a touch of heat and a little bit of tang. There we go. To add a couple toasted pine nuts and voila this is what you call a pita paradise i think that my lamb has been marinating for just enough time i believe that the grill is nice and hot i would love to step outside so let's get that lamb a grill in i think it's going to take about 20 minutes per side that is just enough time for me to show you how to make my homemade hummus and my homemade tabbouleh Pita Paradise! My barbecue is ready and I'm very excited. This lamb has been marinating in yogurt and olive oil, salt and pepper, but I don't want it to catch on fire. So I need to clean it off just a bit. I have a bunch of paper towels here and I'm just gonna brush off the excess marinade. Alrighty, so this is ready to go. I am gonna cook this lamb on the grill for 20 minutes per side. Come out, check it with a meat thermometer. It should be perfect. So let's go inside and get started on that tabbouleh and homemade hummus.
that Mrs. A's is handmade. It is so handmade. And then we have Martha, who we call Magic Martha. She scoops it up and fills hundreds, thousands of containers. And then they get hand capped, hand sealed, hand stamped, and into the, into the refrigerator. Key to paradise, here we are. My lamb is happily being barbecued outside. It's gonna take about 20 minutes per side. So while that's cooking, I am gonna get started on my tabbouleh. I have already made some bulgur wheat. Bulgur wheat is super high in protein, believe it or not. And it's a very healthy carbohydrate. I equate it to like a quinoa and it's a two to one ratio. So one cup of dry bulgar to two cups of water. I add a little salt, a little olive oil. I bring it to a boil and drop it down to a simmer and it cooks just like rice. It's nice and fluffy, which is just what we want. And I'm gonna just make like a California style tabbouleh. And what that means is everything is gonna be a very rough chop. It's not gonna be super fine like a traditional tabbouleh would be. We are gonna start by adding a lot of lemon. So these lemons are straight off my tree. Hopefully they're juicy. This is the juice of two lemons and I think I might even add a third just to make sure. With my handy dandy lemon squeezer that is also great for making cocktails. All righty. So I am kind of bummed that I'm not able to go on vacation before my baby gets here because I've been told it's really important to have what's known as a baby moon. So I think that because I am so busy with work, this little Mediterranean staycation is gonna be just perfect. All right, the juice of three lemons. Oops. And have some of the pulp in there, but you know what? I feel like it's gonna make it taste better. I love the tang in tabbouleh. To this, I have a mixture of different herbs. I have some parsley, some cilantro, a little bit of oregano. Traditionally, tabbouleh only has parsley and it's minced very, very fine. It also has tomato, which is also minced very, very fine. In my recipe, I'm doing it California style. I'm doing it Organicopia style. I like things fast. I like things simple. I like things very flavorful. Time is of the essence because I cannot wait to eat that lamb. So I'm just gonna do a nice rough chop. I've been known to blow up a barbecue or two, so it always kind of scares me when I'm cooking lamb. Like, my biggest fear is that I'm gonna catch that little sucker on fire. Alrighty, I have one tomato. Cut it in half. And we are gonna do planks, sticks, cubes. If your knife is not sharp, you should probably use a serrated knife. It's way easier to cut tomatoes with a serrated knife. Perfect. And we're gonna do one more. This is one of my husband's favorite dishes. 
So hopefully he's gonna love it. I know that he loves lamb. He could eat that every day of the week if he had the option to. Give this a really nice stir. You can see all the herbs and the tomatoes. We have some bright citrus in there, the bulgar wheat, which is super high in protein, healthy carbs, great for you. I'm gonna give that just a touch of salt, even though I already put some in the water when I bo boiled the bulgar. And just a little bit of cracked pepper. And let's get started on our hummus. I need to clean up my board just a smudge. I like to work on a nice clean work surface. Alrighty, so hummus. I don't have any more lemons. I wish I did, but I don't. So I'm gonna use red wine vinegar. This recipe is very simple. We're gonna take this cute little Vitamix. Maybe I'll leave that right there. I am going to roughly chop half a yellow onion. We're gonna drop that in the Vitamix. I'm gonna add a couple cloves of garlic, three to be exact. We're gonna drop that in. I'm gonna add some cayenne pepper because I like my food with a little bit of kick. If you don't like spice, leave it out. I'm gonna add a little bit of paprika for the color and a nice warm flavor. I'm also gonna add some salt and a smudge of pepper. Let's add the two main ingredients. Okay, so we are gonna add one can of chickpeas. I've already drained these, but I did save the liquid. That's really important. This is a 14 ounce can of chickpeas. And the final ingredient, but very important, is tahini paste. Tahini paste is basically sesame paste, ground up sesame seeds. I'm gonna add a quarter cup. It's pretty powerful stuff. Awesome blossom. Let's give this a little stir in our handy dandy Vitamix. And if this does not blend and it's super thick, we're gonna add that leftover liquid that was inside the chickpea can. That's why you need to save it. So we're gonna start this on low. Awesome. I feel like that might be perfect. Now, this is all blended, ready to go, and it needs just a touch of acid. I really prefer using lemons, but like I said, I'm out of lemons, so I'm gonna use red wine vinegar. I'm improvising because, as you know, I have a hard time following a recipe as it is, so why not just make it up? Red wine vinegar. I'm gonna start by adding just a couple tablespoons. If it needs more, I can add it later, but you can never take it back out. Alrighty. Cool, yo. I think that's gonna be perfect. I could totally taste that tahini though because I did not wash off that spoon before I put the tahini in here. That is so perfect. It's got a really great bite to it. I love the cayenne. Alrighty, it has been about 20 minutes. I think that lamb's just about done. I'm gonna get all this stuff cleaned up, go flip the lamb, 
and then we will be ready to dig into our pita paradise. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, you guys, so this lamb has been cooking for roughly 20 minutes per side. I am going to flip it. You know that your lamb is done when it doesn't stick to the grill. If it's sticking to the grill, do not touch it. It's not ready. It will let you know when it's ready. So that looks great. I'm gonna let this cook for another 20 minutes. We are gonna have the most perfect tender lamb. I've got this handy dandy meat thermometer to check it, but I can also show you another way to check your lamb if you don't have a meat thermometer. So let's put that lid back on, kick back and relax on this nice Mediterranean staycation. What's a little staycation without a cocktail? I unfortunately cannot drink for the next two months, so I've decided I'm gonna make a little mocktail. This is an orange and mint spritzer, and I think you guys are gonna to totally love it. It's perfect for spring or summer, and it's gonna go great with that lamb. I have half a cup of boiling water, and to that, I'm gonna add roughly one cup of sugar. Maybe we'll add more. Wow, that's like a perfect pour right there. One cup of sugar, half a cup of water. All we need to do is let this allow the sugar to melt. I have some bright, beautiful mint. Picked this straight from my garden while I was barbecuing away. I'm gonna drop that in there. It's gonna infuse this simple syrup that we're making. So I've added this mint and the sugar and water are mixing all together. I'm gonna turn this off and I'm gonna let it sit for 20 minutes. This is infusing all of that sugar water with the mint flavor. Meanwhile, I'm gonna get started on the inside of my little mocktail. Alrighty, our orange and mint mocktail. I have a nice glass pitcher that I've put some ice into. I have one last lemon, three oranges, some nice bubbly water. You guys are gonna really enjoy this. Okay, so let's start by squeezing in the mandarin orange juice and the lemon. The lemon will make this tart. The oranges will keep it slightly sweet. Throw it right in there. Mandarin orange juice, nice and sweet, citrusy. Lemon juice, let's make this sucker a little bit tart. We like complexity in our drink so that we feel like we're actually having a real cocktail even though it's a mocktail. This is gonna end up giving us about a cup of juice. We have one regular navel orange, and then one last mandarin. My simple syrup has been sitting there infusing all of that delicious mint into the sugar water for about 20 minutes. I am going to bring this over, and we're just gonna pour it right into our pitcher. We can't get much easier than that. And to that, I'm gonna add half a bottle of this bubbly water. Booyah! How good is this gonna be? Perfect. Alrighty. So I have my cute little martini glass here. I'm gonna garnish it with a nice little piece of mint. Maybe you might wanna add some fresh fruit, so I'm gonna add some raspberries. Kind of feel like I'm having some sangria. And 
Let's give this little mocktail a stir. And try it out. To die for you guys. I swear to God, this is so good. And I just thought about making it on the fly with all of the stuff that I have in my fridge. Didn't have to go to the store for it, and it was an afterthought. And let me tell you, it is that good. Oopsies. I think my lamb's ready. I am totally ready to set up this nice little tablescape Mediterranean staycation. Let's go grab that lamb, slice it real thin, make some pitas, and dig in. I'm starving, you guys. I cannot wait to try this lamb. Look at how perfect it is. Oh my gosh, I've been grilling it for 20 minutes per side outside on the wonderful barbecue. I still have all this delicious juice that is sitting in here. So I do have a meat thermometer. I'm not gonna show you how to check this with a meat thermometer. I'm gonna show you the old fashioned oaky way. And this is the way I've been doing it for years because I only just invested in a meat thermometer. I'm not even kidding you about a week ago. So here's what you do. You cut in, oops, the very thickest part of the meat or the steak and you just check to make sure that it's not gelatinous looking. This looks so perfect. This is really juicy. I've also let this rest, which is really important. So what happens is you put this meat on the grill, it gets all loosey-goosey, and once you let it rest, you take it off the grill. You can either tent it with a piece of foil or just let it sit. It sucks back in all of that juice. So let's slice this up. Oh yeah, it's perfect. I'm cutting it against the grain, just like that. And I'm gonna put together a nice little pita with my pita paradise. I'm gonna put some of this lamb in there. Oh, heavens to Murgatroyd. Let's do a little red onion. Maybe a little piece of this feta. Kalamata olive for good luck and a little cherry tomato. I'll squeeze just a touch of this lemon on here. Alrighty. This is Good Eats. I hope you guys try this recipe. Perfect. But what would that pita be without trying a little bit of our tabbouleh and homemade hummus? I have this killer, nice, beautiful, spicy hummus that has just a hint of tahini in there. And we also have this wonderful, citrusy, bright, bulgar wheat that we mixed with a lot of fresh herbs straight from my garden. Some tomato. And I would have to say this is pretty much very close to being the best pita pocket I've ever had, and it beats going to the restaurant any day of the week. I wanna thank you guys so much for joining me on my little slice of heaven's staycation and Mediterranean feast. I am Molly Bravo. This is Organicopia, the total organic experience. Thank you so much for coming and barbecuing with me, and I cannot wait to see you guys next time.